All right, you guys, you're on a great run of no pre-lessons. This is just uh, right in your face. The formulas are given to us, so we're just going to dive in. So, section 5.1 and 5.2 were kind of introductory things on matrix algebra. Today we're going to get into something else called determinant. So you see that word right there, determinant. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. There's this guy. His name's Kramer. Not from Seinfeld, but um, he's got Kramer's rule. Now he's going to make your life so easy. And he invented something that works. So behold the wonders of math. But the, what I'm trying to say is he involves determinants. So this today we're just getting warmed up for the next lesson, to be honest with you. But uh, a two by two. To find the determinant, by the way, a determinant is a special number, all right? It's special. Why is it special? Because Kramer invented something that uses that number. It actually is amazing that these mathematicians stumbled on these things that work. It is. However, let's just get uh, down to business here. So here you have a two-by-two two matrix, two rows. Two columns, and how do you find this special number that's called the determinant? Well, look, we're going to go backwards. It says multiply A times D, so that means multiply diagonal from upper left to bottom right. So let's apply it to here. Here's my upper left to bottom right. Three times negative two is negative six. But then it says minus, and now notice what it does next. It says B times C. See that? B times C, which means multiply this way. Okay, we're going to multiply that way. Very easy to forget the negative. Don't forget the negative. That's part of the formula. So what do we get, though, when we multiply that way? Well, we get 14. What's the special number? Negative 20. What does it do for us? Nothing today. When we start looking at the Kramer's rule, then it will be our key that unlocks the door to these mathematical truths. Okay, let's try this one without so much fancy coloration. We go that way. How come? It's what it says to do. See that? And then we're going to go 6 minus. Don't forget the minus. We're going to multiply that way. And here's a double negative because we have to subtract the negative 8. Well, that's 6 plus 8 which is 14. There you go. Now here's the deal, you guys. This crazy thing, I don't teach it. All right? There's a way, way more enjoyable, more challenging way to do what's called 3x3 three three determinants. And I don't do this. You're more than welcome to, but you will never, ever remember this, I don't think, unless you have a photographic memory. Um, here's how I teach it, okay? You start if you have a 3x3 three three and you're trying to find this special number that's called the determinant, you pick out the upper left-hand corner, just peel it right out, then you make an invisible line down, an invisible line across. I'm making it very light. And then you see you've got this 2x2 two two matrix sitting right here. And you're going to go 4, 1, negative 1, 6. All right? Now I'm going to move 1 down. I'm going to take this guy out. So I'm going to erase this little box. And what you have to remember, though, the first one is like there's an invisible positive. So whatever's up here, you just take it. But there's always a minus, always, if you're going to use this technique. And then you peel that number out. Now, if that happened to be a negative 2, then that would ultimately result in a plus 2. But it's a, it's a positive 2. And now if I take, like, this, my pencil, and this, like this, and I say, hey, what's the 2 by 2 matrix? You can see it. It's 3, 1, 7, 6, and that's what's going to go right here. So 3, 1, 7, 6, and it goes plus. So really it goes plus, minus, plus, and then you go right down the line. You peel that guy out, and we'll use my little writing utensil trick again. So I'm going to cover up everything there underneath it. Oh, don't roll. And then I'm going to cover up everything here. And what do I have left? 3, 4, 7, negative 1. 
So I put that right here. 3, 4, 7, negative 1. Very easy to make a small mistake here. So now we've kind of graduated from a 3x3 three three to a whole bunch of 2x2s. Two now we're going to use this rule up here, which means use that rule. So this is kind of like PEMDAS. You know, some of you, maybe you're going to want to distribute through. Uh, now we're going to take care of stuff inside this matrix first. So we're going to go like this. 4 times 6, which is 24, minus always, always. And then what do we get this way? Negative 1. So that's 25 times 5. We'll get to that in a minute. How about this one? Well, this is 18 minus 7. So I get minus 2 times 11. And this guy, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, minus negative 28. So that's the same thing as negative 3 plus 28. So that would be plus 8 times 25. Well, this is 125. This is negative 22. This is 200. So I'm going to add the positives together. I get 325 minus 22. That would be 303. There's my special number. But you're not sure why it's special yet. But you're just practicing, getting ready for Kramer's rule. Okay, so here's a second example. You've got to love these zeros because they just knock things out for us. But we're going to peel that out. And we're going to do our little pencil trick here. So then we take a line to the right, a line underneath it, and there's our 2 by 2, 0, 4, 1, 1. Always a minus. And we take out the second item in our first row little trick, and we're left with zero, excuse me, negative one, four, zero, one. Negative one, four, zero, one. Plus, take that negative one out. I think I can squeeze it in here. Pencil trick, pencil marker trick, we're left with one, negative one, zero, zero, one. Negative one, zero, zero, one. Now we just got a bunch of two by twos. So this is zero minus four, doing a little bit more in my head, is negative three. And this one, negative one minus zero is negative one. And then I get negative one minus zero is negative one. So that's just plus negative one times negative one. It's negative six plus three plus 1. So that's 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. And there it is. Go to the back side. So, <clears throat> I'm not going to get too involved in this thing called identity matrix, but I just want you to know, for example, a long time ago, 9 times 1 is 9. So anything times 1, this 1 is called the identity, okay? So anything times 1 is itself. So that's the math, multiplication, multiplicative identity. Look at this. If I actually found this matrix, I'd go this way. Find the determinant. It would be 1 minus 0 equals 1. So strangely, this, when I find the determinant, it equals 1. So does this one. So does this one. But I am not going to take your time to prove that to you because it's not that important right now. Okay? This is what these next three problems are going to ask you to understand. It's another formula, and we just have to find it, okay? So it's saying, if you have a 2 by 2, then, and here it is right here, then the inverse of that matrix is going to be equal to this crazy-looking formula. Now, I want, you to show, I want to show you something. That A goes from upper left to bottom right. This B just simply stays in its place, but it, it turns itself opposite. Same thing with the C, stays in the same place, but you take the opposite. And look at the D, see that right there, and that D right there? So literally, A and D switch. C and B stay put, but then you take the opposite of each. And then what's this 1 over 
the determinant business? Well, it means that we have to follow this formula, so we're going to do it. 1 over the determinant of this matrix, which means we go this way, 6 minus negative 8, which is 14. So it's 1 over 14. And now we just obey these really weird rules from here to here. So A and D switch. So these two switch. And then these two stay put, but you take the opposite of that and the opposite of that. So that's 4, and that'd be negative 2. Now you're technically done, but what they're going to do is they're going to distribute this through and distribute, 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 just to take it one step further. So I would get 6 fourteenths, and I'd get 4 fourteenths. Then in the bottom, I'd get negative 2 fourteenths. And then in the bottom right, I'd get 1 fourteenth. I'm almost done because that reduces to, that'd be 3 sevenths. This would be 2 sevenths. This would be negative 1 seventh. And this is 1 14th because that doesn't reduce. And then you're done. By the way, I'm not going to bore you to death, but if you multiplied this one by that one, you'd get 1. Think about it. If I took 2 thirds and I multiplied it by its reciprocal, I'd get 1. That's what you're doing, but this is involving matrices. Okay? Kind of crazy. All right. Well, let's follow this. We've got to find the inverse. Well, the first thing we should do is find the determinant. So we're going to go like this, 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, so I get 1 half. Now I just follow the yellow brick road. Flip these two. Take the opposite of that and the opposite of that. Then I distribute that fraction through everything, and then I'm done. I can do this in my head, though. That's 1, negative 1 half. Negative one half, or excuse me, one half times negative four is negative two. One half times three is three halves. That's a two. And we're done. All right. Last one. I got to find the inverse of that. Well, the first thing I have to do is find the determinant of c. So I try it. All right. Eight times five is forty minus forty. Do you see a problem? I have a problem to get started. I don't even need to do this anymore because this is mathematically impossible. It's a big old no-no. So this is no solution. Can't do it. Mathematically impossible. And that's it, you guys. That is it. Now, if you want to continue listening and be a little bit bored, I'm going to multiply this one by that one to show you what it is you just did. If you want to turn this off right now, I wouldn't judge you for a second. But I'm going to multiply this matrix by this matrix and just show you what you're actually finding. No, this is not part of your assignment. But 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, 1 times negative 2 is 1. And then I'm going to throw this guy through this guy now. So I get negative 3 halves plus positive 3 halves, which is 0. Now I'm going to multiply, I'm going to throw this row through this, excuse, yeah, this row through this column. So I get 4 plus negative 4 is 0. And here I get negative 2. And if I, and if I multiply it, see, 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. 2 times 3 halves is 3, because the 2's would cancel. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. What do we get? We got the identity matrix. What's this equal to? Well, if I figured this out, it'd be 1 minus 0, which is 1. Do you get it? So this is A. This is the inverse of A. And there's the value of it. It allows you to find the inverse matrix. Okay? Done.